I generally pour with the three primary colors, and I'm doing that today. And you can see the dollop size of paint that I put in the bottom here. Now, I have used for this the Cheap Joe's American Journey paints that work really well for pouring. So I'm now mixing my paints, and this is surprising how important it is to mix your paints. And you have to mix it more than you think you're going to mix it because it'll just set in the bottom, it takes a long time to mix it up. Even though you mix it up ahead of time, when you actually go to pour it, it's a really good idea to mix it yet one more time. So I leave these brushes right in it the whole time I'm using it. One thing I notice as my painting has dried is a bloom. Now, a bloom can be a curse or a bonus, depending on where it shows up. I actually like this bloom. I like it where it is, and it's kind of near the center, and it's kind of interesting. If this were a bloomed edge all the way around the edge of my painting, which I think some of you have seen at home when you do a wash, then you know that's not very attractive. But the bloom came because there was puddles of paint that weren't soaked up and didn't dry as fast as the paint around it. So if this dries faster, and then this is wetter, then it ends up with a bloom and it ends up with an edge. But I always just consider those little gifts because they do some random things on your paper that you couldn't do otherwise. Now I know you'd like a magic potion of how much paint to how much water. The truth is, experience is what will tell you. When I do a first initial wash, I water it down more. And as my layers get more progressive, I make it thicker. So this being a second layer, I didn't make it as thin as it would be if it were an initial wash, but I didn't make it as thick as it would be if it were a final wash where I was just pouring in some darks. Now I'm going to take a wider brush. This time I'm actually going to wet it. I do a very, very gentle touch because I don't want to disturb that paint and I don't want to disturb those fibers and wake them up because I'm hoping that this paint is going to just glide across the surface of the water. The water is going to act as transportation for the paint. If I were to just pour the paint on the paper, it would just bubble up and find the path of least resistance and all run off the paper. So that's why I want to wet it all the way across so that as I pour the paint on, it will diffuse across the surface. I'm using, as you can see, a lot of water. When you think you have enough water, I say wet it one more time. We want the whole surface to glisten. And the easiest way is to look at it from the side way and see if it's all glistening. You can see if you've missed spots. Now the camera will probably be able to tell if I've missed spots and you're all home screaming, you missed one right there in the center that I don't see. Now I have options. I can either pour the colors over where they already are, if I like them, the blues out here, the reds and the yellows through the center, or if I don't like what I have going on, I can mix it up and pour the blue through the center to bring it down and gray it down a little bit, make it a little more purple. So it depends on what's your end result that you have in mind, how you choose your colors. Stage two is your layer that is the easiest to adjust. If you didn't get what you liked in the first layer, if you meant to do a warm dominance, but you poured it and the blue took over and you have a cooler dominance than you want, this is the layer where you really wanna make your adjustments. I like what I have going on, so I think I'm gonna replicate that a little bit and I think we've got enough water on there. The masking that you have on your paper acts as little dams, so it'll keep the paint from moving, like it keeps the water from moving in between the dams. I generally start with yellow when I'm pouring, and I often finish with yellow. I often use yellow first, do red and blue, and then go back and use a little bit of yellow. The yellow is the hardest to get to stay on the paper. It just wants to disappear. It gets eaten up by those other stronger colors. Because I like this sort of diagonal thrust that we have going on here, I'm gonna actually just pour this yellow Look how much of the paint is not yet mixed up even though I've mixed for quite a while. I often don't use the very bottom pouring. I just add more color and more water so that I don't pour it all out. So I will do the red next. If I did it over top of the yellow, everything would turn orange. And I don't think that's what we want. So I'm gonna do it right alongside of the yellow. Nothing if not colorful, would you say? When I work in my classrooms, this is where I get the oohs and the ahs. Now I'm going to do the blue along the edge because that's where my basket is more and that's where I want the colors to be cooler and a little less dramatic. Now I can pick my paper up and sort of work it like I did with my initial spritzing. Sort of blend the colors. You never can get the same thing twice. They have a life of their own. The red seems to want to take over today. I guess it's the uh, alpha. The red is the alpha today. Mm -hmm. 
Now you can play at this as long as you want until you have what you want. 